Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I am going to be setting up a wax moth breeding tank and hopefully taking you through the whole process of breeding the wax moths. Obviously they produce wax worms and I happen to have tons of pupa and although I do feed these off to my geckos now and again it's getting to the point where a lot of them are hatching out before I get the chance. Now to begin we need some escape proof ventilation so what we did is drill holes in the top of this tank obviously the holes are fairly big so then we went back with some fabric which is a breathable fabric but there aren't like very big holes in it I basically doubled it up stuck it down with some sellotape this is the same material I used on the top of my stick insect setup and it's really good for uh, preventing small animals from escaping. One problem I ran into years ago when I was breeding uh, wax moths is the baby wax moths were tiny and they were all coming out the teeny tiniest holes so hopefully this prevents that. Now a lot of setups I've seen people have put their oats and honey at the bottom but at the moment I don't have any wax worms at all. All that's going to be coming out is wax moths so to begin with this is what I'm going to do you can do it differently if you want. I'm just going to add in some cardboard bits we've got some egg cartons and the inside of uh, paper towel some people will also use like wax paper as well that can work really well too now right now this looks like the bottom of a recycling bin it does not look interesting at all i cut this up just so i don't know <laughs> a little bit different but what i'm going to do is add in the pupas now once i start to see those eggs this is when i'm going to be adding in food for the potential future wax worms i just feel like right now i feel like it will just go off and go skanky so what i'm going to do i'm looking through the pupas over here because if they look like they could they're fresh and my geckos could potentially eat them then i'm going to keep them i know it sounds harsh but So I've seen loads and loads of moths hatching out and I'm very curious to see whether we actually have any eggs yet. So I'm going to carefully take this off, hopefully not escape, and we'll have a look on the cardboard. Now sadly there are some dead moths on the floor. However, this can sometimes mean that the female has been bred with and laid eggs. That could be a positive. We've got a live one in here. So I can't really see little eggs. I think they're just minute that might be why we can't really see them at the moment. I'm trying to be careful because there are quite a few live moths in here and I don't want them to escape. However, I'm going to wait a little longer and then I'm going to probably just like add some food in here just in case we do start to see wax worms. So with every tutorial I've seen or setup guide for wax worms, I've seen honey and oats mixed. So I've got some oats and now I'm going to get a big scoop of honey which has actually solidified a bit actually. Oh my god. Why has this gone hard? This is what I originally got for the ants, but obviously they don't need a lot of it, so it's now sort of solidified, which is kind of disgusting. I should have heated this honey up, I didn't know it was so hard, but basically what I'm going to do now is take this. This is what I did years ago, I don't know if this is still a thing, but you roll it on some tin foil, and you can basically roll it up without touching it but now i've got this bit Ugh! i hate honey i hate the texture i hate how it like sticks the smell oh okay so this basically just clumps it up a bit and doesn't get your hands dirty now as i mentioned last time i looked i couldn't find any eggs but they could be absolutely tiny and i didn't want to mess this about too much but that isn't to say there aren't any in here. That isn't to say we won't get wax worms. Um, so I'm going to find a spot where there's nothing, like no uh, pupa or anything. And then I'm going to pop down the honey. I mean, I could see this going really disgusting. <laughs> this is why I didn't want to put like the whole floor like this. But we shall wait and see. So it's been a long time since I updated. We've had a lot of moths and obviously a lot of them have died um, but even though that sounds sad it's actually a good thing because usually they die after they have bred and laid eggs and so in that sense they have completed their life cycle. So what I'm going to do now is go around and remove any dead moths. Oh 
Oh wow, <laughs> I did not realize there were so many this side as well. So we have gone through a lot of moths. I also noticed after I put the food in that some of the moths actually did go on the food. I don't know if they would eat it necessarily, but um, I did see them on it. Maybe they'll lay an egg straight onto it because they know their babies will, you know, get food straight away. So maybe we'll see some waxworms hatch out in the food. So, oh, oh. Did something just move in there? I don't know. At this point, the wax ones would be absolutely tiny, so it might be difficult to see. But the only other moth I've seen in here alive is one with deformed wings. But other than that, um, I think now we're just going to be waiting to find wax worms. So it's actually been quite a while since I updated these wax worms because honestly I haven't seen anything we had no new moths to breed or anything so I was just waiting for things to hatch and I was looking on this and there are these microscopic like little bumps on this like you wouldn't even be able to see it from here not not these because these come out when the moth sort of comes out of the chrysalis but basically I got out my USB microscope and I had a closer look. As you can see, we have eggs. They're absolutely tiny. I did find some eggs where it looks like they've probably hatched out. So now I know we definitely have waxworms in here, but they are tiny. So then I started to look around and I looked on the lid of the tank where the sellotape is. And we actually found a ton of waxworms, but they had somehow got underneath the sellotape and died so that's a shame because I don't understand they have food at the bottom here you'd think they would go down to the food but these ones clearly didn't I also wonder if some has actually escaped because they might be able to get through that material anyway I decided to then take my microscope and look through the sort of this stuff here um, it was tricky because obviously this stuff looks massive but we started to see tiny worms in it so we do in fact have wax worms in here how long it would take for them to get to a decent size i do not know um i think i could be waiting around for quite a while since setting up this breeding colony i've actually gone out and bought myself more wax worms because you know setting up a colony does take time even with the mealworms you'll be waiting around for a while but once it sort of gets established you end up with food all the time i'm not sure how these wax worms will end up but I will do an update in the future if they do get bigger and we actually start to see them with our own eyes and not with a microscope. But I hope you've kind of enjoyed this. Obviously, this isn't the prettiest setup, but it has actually worked for us. Um, so yeah, make sure you're subscribed so you can see that update video and all my other videos that I upload. But yeah, thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye.